groups. Yes. So it shouldn't be exactly the Either. same. No, no, that's why I have the, the ad lib also and between mm -hmm. MP and F. Okay. So let's give it a try. So I don't think there are any more. Yes, I just Thank you. delighted to, to be involved in this particular project because I've been trying to write a string quartet for at least three years, another string quartet, and uh, this in fact will be string quartet number two, but string quartet number three is virtually finished because it was in process before this project. Um, the, the string quartet, because I've had this fantastic opportunity to have workshops with the quartet to meet them in advance and to have these workshops. Um, I've been able to try out something I probably wouldn't have otherwise and that's in the form of two sections. It, it's a one movement piece uh, about 10 minutes long in total and uh, there are two sections in it that are aleatoric, aleatoric in a, a small way at least in that um, it's left to the discretion of the performers when they come in in a sort of canonic fashion and for how long they repeat sections a bit like Terry Riley and C that kind of thing and um, I, I, I'd be very interested today now in the second workshop to try out the notation and see if it is precise enough while allowing enough freedom as well to see if that that works um, it's the one problem I have had is in, in notating these free sections. It's so helpful to have the composers to get the right information uh, directly from the source. That's so important. It, it, it's uh, very unfortunate that we play a lot of uh, music written by dead composers and you don't get that option. I would say that all composers would prefer to work so close to the performer, to, to, to the performers, you know, because it's 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 very important to to feed us with the right information, and if we deviate, so we get back to what we should do. Of course, a lot of them give us uh, great freedom, but again, it's good to have some points of references. Uh, Rona's uh, piece, Rona's quartet is uh, in a way more traditional. We know what are the, the, the notes you have to play, when to play. It is true we, we do have two, two uh, paragraphs where we do get more freedom. But apart from that, uh, we are more certain what we have to do. In the other case, in uh, Gronian's uh, piece, uh, the pitch, you most of the time, uh, it's it's so free. 
you could, for example, you have to play the highest note. Or, well, the highest note today could be uh, C sharp, or and next day maybe even hi higher. So um, it is different and uh, very challenging. Mm -hmm. I'm always interested in trying to maybe relay maybe a story of some particular scientific con concept. And so that was just really. It was going to be based on something like that because I wanted to kind of have a good kind of gamut of every kind of possibility with the instruments as well. I wanted to try as much as I possibly could with them, and so therefore I thought that you know a scientific concept would relay this and would um, give me a lot of scope to work on, on something of that type of character. And then I'm working with the harmonic series as well, which is another. It's kind of chaotic in itself as well because you've got a very nice lush end and then you've got a very high, you've got an area where all the partials kind of come together closer and closer and you've got a, a noise element as well. So that gave me a, a, a great palette. Well, it gave me, at least for me anyway, from my point, I like working with that. And it just gave me a lot to work from, a good kind of palette of sound. So that's the kind of marriage of two kind of scientific things, things that are being kind of like worked on, uh, spectralism and then science, that, that type of thing.